Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 13 of the simple series of my 650 to assembly programming tutorials. In this series, we take the previous example, which was a simple bitmap of smiley face on the screen, and we're going to add joystick control. We're going to move it around the screen. And the idea of this is that this could be the starting point for a simple game if you felt like programming one. So we're going to show you how to do that. We're going to do an example that will compile on the Atari 800 and 5200. And this is a bit tricky this time because in most cases, those are virtually the same system. In the case of the joystick, the Atari 800 has something called the PIA, which is a digital joystick, whereas the Atari 5200, we have to use the analog joystick. So the reading for the joystick is very different, but the rest of the code is basically the same. Let's go over to the code. And let's see it in action. OK, so first of all, let's fire up the example on both systems. So here's our Atari 5200 here. It's a bit small, but um, we'll have to make do, I think. Uh, and you can see, if I press the cursor keys, the smiley is moving around. And if I get to the end of the screen, if I keep holding the keys, I'm not going off the defined screen area because we've got some boundary checking in there. So you can see that's the Atari 5200 emulator. And now let's try the Atari 800 emulator. And here it is. And different keys this time, different emulators, different controls. So you can see we've got the controls working just fine on this one as well. But as I say, there is some differences in the way we read the joystick on the two. So we're going to go over the code. We're going to look at the bits that are new and the bits that have changed. But we're going to assume you've looked at the bitmap example. So if you haven't, once you get to the end of this episode, please look at the bitmap example for the code that does the screen initialization and the details of the bitmap drawing, because I'm not going to go over that again. OK. So first of all, we've got some new definitions in the zero page. There's two here for the X and Y position of the player. And then there's another two, which were the last valid position for the player. And this is because when our player is moving around the screen, sometimes they might go off the screen and we need to bounce them back into the legitimate play areas of the screen. We've got some definitions here. We've got the PIA here, which handles the joystick on the Atari 800. On the 5200, it's actually part of the pokey. So we're going to have to look at that later. Now, Here's the graphics initialization. We're not going to go over this again because it's not changed since last time. This is the first new part here. This is where we're setting up the starting position of the player on the screen. And we're starting at X position 3, Y position 3. What we're doing next is we're jumping over the read routine for the first iteration of the game. The reason for this is that normally the read routine will wait until the player presses a key. And if we waited first time, we'd never show the starting position of the player. So we're just skipping over and we're loading a default value in for the player key presses. Let's have a look at those player key presses right now. So on the Atari 800, reading in for the joystick is very easy. So all we do is load in from PIA offset zero and the bottom nibble of the, that byte will actually be up, down, left and right for the first joystick. The top nibble would be the second joystick. So we're just masking those out and keeping those in ZH. That's all we have to do on the Atari 800. Very nice. Not so nice on the Atari 5200. We're having to read in from two ports of the pokey, pokey offset zero and pokey offset one. And then what we're doing is we're having to do some range checking. And what I'm saying is if the, the resulting analog value is in the top 64 or the bottom 64 of the 255 byte range, then that's considered a press in that direction. So we've got a kind of dead zone of 128 in the middle. So we're reading in from the bytes and then we're using this conversion routine, which is going to set bits accordingly for the left and right and up and down here, just depending on those two paddles there. So effectively, if we run this routine, we will get the same equivalent value on the Atari 5200 as we did on the 800. Now this code isn't covering the fire buttons. If you want to see the fire buttons, please look at my platform specific joystick routine, which did cover that, but it wasn't needed for this very simple example today. So I didn't want to include it. Anyway, once we've run this routine, whether we were using the analogs or the digitals, thanks to these conversion routines here, the bits returned will be the same. And so we will have up, down, left and right and bits zero to three of ZH here. So at this point, we're going to be starting the draw routine. We're just backing up the last position of the player here into those second variables. And then we're removing the current player sprite using blank player. Let's see that. Now blank player and draw player are based on the sprite drawing routines from last time. Effectively, draw player is the same smiley drawing routine as last time. Blank player is almost identical. It's just using a different sprite. Now you can see the smiley sprite just here. 
but the blank sprite is this one here, which is basically just eight bytes of zero data. So the blank player routine will just draw a sprite with no data in it to just clear away the old smiley. Once we've done that, we will then load in the X and Y positions into the X and Y registers here, and then we'll start testing the joystick values that we've read in. So here we're testing each bit in ZH here. And so first we're testing the up bit, and if that bit isn't zero, then that button isn't pressed. So we'll skip over this next part here. You see this part will actually move the player up the screen. So if we aren't pressing up, we need to skip over that. Then we do the same for down. This will move the player down the screen. This will move the player left, and this will move the player right. Now you'll notice we're moving left and right in one unit amounts, but we're moving up and down in eight unit amounts. And that's because our smiley is eight pixels wide, but just a single byte. So it'd be quite hard to move a single pixel across. So it's easier for this simple example to just move in eight pixel chunks in both directions. So that's why we're doing those different amounts there. Once we've got here, we've tested all the directions. So what we're doing next is we're storing the X and Y position of the player back into the zero page entries here. And then we're gonna test the position to check the player's not gone off the screen. Now, the top left-hand side corner of the screen is zero comma zero. So if the player goes off the left-hand side of the screen, they'll bounce back to 255. Because of this, we only need to test the maximum boundaries of each dimension. So we're just checking if the X position's over 40 or the Y position's over 200 minus eight. And if they are, we're jumping to this reset routine here. And this uses that backup that we made earlier of the player position to restore the player position back onto the screen. When we get here, whatever happens, the player can now be drawn back to the screen in their new position. And then we've just got a simple delay loop here. And then we jump all the way back up to the top here to read in the controls again and repeat the procedure again. So there you go. So this hopefully would be a good starting point if you were trying to create your own game and you just needed some ideas of how to sort of get a moving sprite onto the screen or, or to read in from the joystick. So maybe you could convert this into some kind of Pong game or some kind of um, shooter game where you've got to, two players trying to shoot each other. But anyway, as I say, hopefully it's enough to get you started. So there we go. So that's all I wanted to cover today. Hopefully you found this interesting. If you have, you know, please like and subscribe because that really helps with the Google algorithm. It brings my videos higher in the recommendations for people. I hope you all give this a go. You can download the source code from my website. I've got a Discord and a forum. So if you want to chat, please uh, have a look for those and uh, join in. But uh, whatever you do, I hope you'll enjoy programming the Atari 800 5200 and assembly in general. So thanks for watching today and goodbye.